Living the life, guys. Living the life. Do you know what? I haven't done a Thailand rant yet. Do you think it's time? Go back to the hotel and uh, have a little chat. Although I, I do actually have some things to rant about. But uh, it's hard to when it's like this. Actually, this is a decent day for golf. There's, there's a reasonable amount of cloud cover. The humidity's gone away. And uh, all right, the sun's just popped out now, but it won't last long. But I'm not playing golf five days on the trot. I am absolutely beaten, worn out. If you're not used to this kind of stuff, this kind of temperature and, and what have you, then um, it's hard work. God, there's so many pretty ladies walking along this beach this morning. I think I better go for a cold drink. I'll see you indoors in a few minutes. This is an absolutely perfect day for golf. The sea breeze and cloud cover, it's probably only 29 degrees. No real humidity. And I'm just strolling around the beach in the shade, granted. Just waiting for the shops to open, really, because um, the smaller shops open early, but the bigger shops are open 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. That's pretty standard in Thailand, so there's no point leaping out of bed to go shopping early because they're just not open. Until I've done that, I can't start the rant. So, uh, yeah, just had a cold one in a beach bar, enjoying the sea breeze. This is the life, guys. This is the life. Sometimes I wonder why I come out and play so much golf, but I can't actually do nothing for long. I'm no good at doing nothing. If sat by the pool or sat by the beach, if I can manage an hour, that's my limit. What time is it? Yeah, 25 minutes yet. Plus, obviously I gotta let the room cleaner clean my room. Now, every morning, Get your wallet out and just leave a note on the end of the bed. 50 baht will do, because, you know, keep your cleaner happy. And more importantly, let me turn you around. You know, more importantly, if you annoy your cleaner, remember, loud bike, remember that she has access to your toothbrush and your toilet. So don't upset her, will you? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Thailand rant. And I'm not doing it in Thailand. I did it in my hotel room, but the lighting was so poor. I'm not, not too sure what the lighting's like in here, to be honest, so we'll give it a go. First off, big thank you to everyone for well wishing for the the leg. It's a lot better. And I'm out actually having a bit of a knock now, as you've just seen. And I'm doing it rather badly, as you've just seen. I think I'm going to have to call Matt and get some lessons uh, if he's got himself set up somewhere. If not, I'm, I'm not too sure who I'm going to go and get some lessons from. But the first thing is to get my legs strong again, because... You know, I spent three weeks in Thailand riding a golf cart, then a week and a half behind my desk, and then into the hospital, 
and then two and a half weeks with my feet up. So the legs are they're a bit weak. And going up that back nine at Lillybrook was really hard work the other day. Oh dear, I... yeah. Still, it's all good. And now that my right calf no longer looks like the Himalayas, with all the veins being stripped out of it, I'm not too embarrassed to wear shorts. So it's going to be shorts this summer. And I haven't worn shorts in a few years, to be honest. So... Uh, a few thank yous. A thank you to my wife who keeps letting me go on these trips. How many trips is that? I think that, I think that was my 10th, maybe even my 11th trip. I wonder where I would be on YouTube now if I'd been able to record all those years ago. Back in September 2008 was the first trip. And a big thank you to Golf Asian, who were absolutely wonderful. Not just their head office, but their local reps. They were absolutely brilliant in allowing me to change my golf around, add on rounds, change rounds, pick up times, the, the whole shebang. The only downside with Thailand, really, is you turn up about 50 minutes before your tea time. Uh, your caddy takes your bag, you go in the pro shop you get your tickets you go to the locker room change your shoes get your locker you go to the starter and you hand over you hand over a ticket for your um, for your green fee ticket to show that you've paid your caddy fee and a ticket to show you've paid for a golf cart and you're saying I want to go to the driving range and it's sort of like well actually we the first tee's empty off you go to the first tee and it's very hard to argue when you can't speak the language, so you end up on the first tee. Or in my case, quite often the tenth tee. Now what happens in normal times, when there's lots of tourists, is that Golf Asian will put you with a two ball or a three ball. And you play with them. And it's good fun. Because uh, you've got company, you've got three or four caddies who, who are forever sparring off one another. And as you've seen on the um, on Golf Psychics videos, when you've got three or four caddies and a camera, then they play for the camera as well. Uh, and it's, 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 it's immense fun because Thai people are so warm, they're so welcoming, so generous, and a fantastic sense of humour that you laugh all the way around the golf course. It is so, so funny. Like there is a... The second time I go to... Blue Canyon, I get this lady, uh, I'm guessing she was, I think she said she was 67 years old. We get to the first drink stop and of course I'm getting two drinks and I'm topping up my bag of ice to keep them cold and to keep me cold. I take a, I have a bag of ice and I put a face flannel in that bag and then when I get hot then I just take out this cold face flannel and have a wipe round the old clock face and and what have you because the thing out there when it is on a really humid day is your sweat doesn't evaporate so you don't cool down so you have to artificially cool down when it's not humid it, it's fine your sweat evaporates and and you get your cooling that way although it's it's still useful to have a cold flannel so anyway, we get to the first drink stop and I said, you know, what would you like? And I think she had a green tea and she said, uh, I'll have a banana. And uh, for whatever reason, she told me that her husband died two years ago. I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And she, and she went, medium, basically meaning that her marriage was mediocre it was okay but she went medium and then she said i haven't had a banana in a long time and started laughing at her own joke and i was laughing and it... i don't know if that was an offer or not i'm not sure i, I would want to uh, entertain a 67 year old lady even with that kind of sense of humor i tell you what back in 2010 i had a caddy and um where was it? It was Royal Thai Navy. 
we were playing the Royal Thai Navy course. They got 36 holes there. And after about 10 holes, um, she, she, she said something along the lines of that, that she would like to be my wife. And then she went <coughs> and started laughing her head off. Now, I wasn't entirely sure whether she meant that she would kill my wife in order to replace her or that my wife would kill her. I just laughed because I didn't quite understand what was going on. Anyway, the Thailand rant, Phuket. Now, the entry conditions to Thailand at that time were so severe and so many tests, PCR tests, had to be done. And there was a danger that if you failed a PCR test on the island, you could get locked in your hotel room or in a, in a hospital for 10 days that tourists just weren't going. So my hotel room was actually half price. It cost me £55. A lot of the golf was discounted. Um, I actually saved the, uh, around about £500 on the trip due to these discounts. And um, I can't go to Phuket normally. I can't afford it. You know, I can't afford those expensive hotel rooms um, in the proper holiday resorts. That's why I generally go, or always have gone, to the same place on the mainland, because I can bloody afford it. So, will I ever go back to Phuket? The answer is no. But let's talk about the golf courses, and I'll give you a second reason why I won't go back to Phuket. So the first course was Mission Hills, the ex-Jack Nicholas course. It was in a little shabby state. And I would say that is because they just haven't had the tourists to spend on maintenance. But the way that grass grows in Thailand, anything green, it grows like crazy because of the weather. And it wouldn't take more than a few bagfuls of seed in on the bear patches and there weren't that many bear patches there was only a few you know, a few bagfuls of seed on, on the bear patches get a green keeper on the mower on the greens and it will be back to looking like it looks like on the website within three weeks because that's how fast the grass grows you know if you do some serious maintenance on your golf course in England at the end of March it can be the end of May before the grass has come back to where you want it to be and, and the greens can take weeks you know after a hollow tining and sanding if the growing weather isn't quite right if it's a bit cold that then it just doesn't grow and we've seen that on the 11th at, at Lillybrook where the conditions just haven't been right and, and the green hasn't really the, the alterations to the green haven't really settled down so Mission Hills was really quite nice. It's a shame that the view at the end of the course of the islands out in the ocean was a bit hazy. But if you want to know what it looks like when it's nice and sunny, go on the website. And I'm certain they will get that back. Next course was Lock Palm, a fun little golf course. It was a little over 5,500 odd yards from the tees that I played. And, and the reason for that was they had shortened the 10th and the 18th. What you used to do on 10 was go down the hill and then up. And it was a long par 4. Then you had a long drive to the 11th tee. Then when you came off 17, you had a long drive up to the 18th tee, which was by the um, 10th green. And that played as a par 5 that came down the hill and then along the side of the lake. So they shortened both holes and lost something like 400, 420 yards on the golf course. So I should have been playing approximately 5,950 yards par 72. I ended up playing 5,500 and some yards par 71. Now I like what they did to the 10th. That one down through the trees and then a little turn to the left and then a a complicated green. 18 was just a bit of an abortion really. 
it, it was something and nothing. There was no kind of like fair way to aim at. And uh, I didn't play it very well until my last round when I, well, I won't tell you what I did. You'll have to wait and see. Now another thing about Lock Palm, and you may have spotted it in the first video, you'll certainly spot it in the second video, is that 10, 11 and 12 had different grass on the greens. And so those three greens were faster than the other 15 and they were much more difficult to put on. And you'll see that in the second video. I think I made an absolute hash of 11. Anyway, I don't want to spoil what's coming up. But a fun course, a good holiday course, Mission Hills, a good holiday course. And it's important that I put emphasis on that. Because when you go away, you don't want to be playing something that is far, far too difficult. I mean, sure you can play an absolutely beautiful course, but if you're coming off eight or more over your handicap, it's kind of like a sour taste in your mouth. So you do want to play holiday golf courses. Did I actually do that? Makes you look a twat, doesn't it? So, two good holiday golf courses. Yes, there is punishment if you go wrong, but it's not really that bad. And with a number of the holes where you're hitting um, three wood off the tee, etc. Now, somebody asked in the comments, why do your drives go splat? Well, putting it quite simply, in England we get, in a typical year, 885 millimetres of rain. In Thailand you get three meters of rain. Now the rainy season is such that when I was there in March I was heading towards the rainy season. So there was more rain and more thunderstorms than I'm used to. When I go in November you're heading away from the rainy season so you still get rain, you still get thunderstorms, but not so many. So unless a particular hole is raised or has some natural drainage underneath or they've put lots of drainage in, basically you're going splat. You're getting a plugged ball or a ball that jumps out of its plug mark and goes another couple of feet, or on occasion it jumps out of its plug mark and goes backwards a couple of feet. But when you do get a dry hole, then it goes. Because it's so warm, the golf ball really, really goes. You know, iron shots into greens. Um, seven, eight, even ten yards longer than I would get here. Anyway, so that's the first two courses. Then I went to Blue Canyon Lakes course. It's in really good condition. They had some of that broadleaf monkey grass under the trees, which I don't like. It's a native grass. It shouldn't be on a golf course ever. But for some reason, you've, you've, on golf courses which are tree-lined, you get it under the trees. You don't get it under palm trees. You get it under the deciduous native trees. Probably because there's so little light underneath there. That's the only thing that will grow. Um, there was a lot of water. And I did have a good day, apart from one little cock up. I had a good caddy who made life very easy for me. Uh, but again, I don't think it's a holiday golf course. If you were to get... The way I look at holiday golf course is can a, an 18 handicapper who, who's got a little bit of a slice play this golf course? And the answer is no. An 18 handicapper with a bit of a slice could not play that golf course because they would lose four, five, six golf balls with ease, with all that water. Then where did I go? I went to Laguna. Now that was a championship course in that it's held 
various tournaments in absolutely fantastic condition played the blue tees, played it a little bit longer uh, 6,300 and something wasn't it and it was playable there was water on it especially the par threes but you can play away from that and the water didn't really intrude too much on the par fours and the par fives you could make a plan and keep away from it so it was playable which means that it was a holiday golf course a perfect holiday golf course and if you're a shorter hitter than me you can play the whites now the second time around I played the whites by complete mistake sometimes a caddy will look at your age the old silver barnet and take you to a forward tee now I had forgotten that I played the blues the first time around so we go up to the start of set in the golf cart I'm filling my pockets with tea pegs and getting out my laser I'm covering my arms and my legs with the old uh, Factor 50 sun cream then you've got to wipe it off your hands, wash it off your hands and of course by this time the caddies walked up to the white tea with your driver so I just followed her up and I stood on this white tee and I thought that all looks a little bit closer than last time but I couldn't remember so I started playing the white tees what made it even more confusing for me was the wind had turned around 180 degrees so some of the holes where I hit from the blue tee downwind I was finished up in the same place as I was playing the white tee into the wind which added to the confusion you know why did that last hole play shorter and this hole is not playing shorter and I you know I come to a par three and I'd be scratching my head why is this shorter and it wasn't until I, we got onto the 11th tee that I realized that I was on the wrong tee box because when we came off 10 we turned left and we went to that very long blue tee at 550 yards where I was driving over the lake and then over that bunker in the fairway and then I got onto that upslope didn't I and I topped me three wood when we came off the green the second time we went to the right now I've got a par 5 of about 490 yards I'm 60 yards closer and it was that that moment that I realized I was on the wrong tee box but it was too late to change it actually made some holes harder because hazards were in reach whereas from the blue tees they weren't in reach so there's a lesson for you you definitely got to play forward because the driver goes splat but sometimes that can make certain holes play harder because you can reach the damn bunkers then went to Blue Canyon Canyon now that was a disaster the caddy couldn't well she didn't know that the yardage markers were to the front of the green and not the middle of the green when I've played cart path before what usually happens is the caddy will grab three or four clubs I don't know what they're barking at they'll grab three or four clubs hang on a second just one moment right then sorted the dogs out yeah so when you're on the cart path normally the caddy will bring three or four clubs and they know the yardage to the middle of the green and you normally get something like 155 yards pin back so it's up to you then to to judge what you want for a back pin and whether you want to actually go for the back pin and you'll have three or four choices I did did have a caddy once who took six clubs it was a par five and I'd leaked it down the right hand side into the rough and she started pulling numerous clubs out of the bag I said, I said why so many clubs she said well if it's a good lie you want your three wood if it's average you want your seven wood and if it's bad I've got an eight iron and I've got a pitching wedge I think she brought me five iron as well just in case because there was a fairway bunker in the middle of the about a hundred yards short of the green right in the middle of the fairway 
So I had five options, so when we got to the ball, we could choose the right option for the lie and the fairway bunker. But in this case, you know, we were up to 90 odd yards away from the cart, because there wasn't a cart path down every hole, so we were driving the estate road. And I'd say that the, the third hole was the first time that I thought, there's something wrong here because I was past the hundred yard markers. She'd picked a club for what she thought, a single club. So I get to the ball and I'm lasering it and it's a hundred yards. What club have we got? We got the sandwich. Where's the golf car? Oh, it's bloody 50 yards away. What do I do? And it was like that all the way round. And when you're trying to overpower a golf club to get an extra 15 yards out of it, you destroy your bloody swing. And it did. It destroyed my bloody swing. But that one time, um, 16, shouldn't have been hitting driver off that tee. Shouldn't have been hitting driver off, off the 10th either. And it went out. It was right edge of the fairway. And I could instantly see that I might be tucked up behind that tree. So we've gone down the estate road and parked up. And I've said, stay here, I'll shout what club I want. So I've walked the 90 odd yards to the ball and sure enough, I'm tucked up underneath the tree. I can't get over that. Not a chance. So I've lasered the flag, it was about 85. And then I'm thinking, Right, is this a 7-iron chip and run, an 8-iron chip and run, a 9-iron chip and run? Where's my landing point? Which way will the ball kick? And I finally make up my mind over what club I want, and I turn towards the golf cart, and she's steaming across the fairway with one fucking club. And she brings it to me, and it's the sand wedge. And I thought, well, sand wedge doesn't go 85 yards. Haven't you been watching how far I hit the damn golf ball? This isn't going to bloody reach. And then I look at the tree and I'm thinking, well, I'll move the ball forward a bit. I'll lean back on it and try and hoist it. That's, that's, so I've hit it into the tree and then I've hit it into the tree again. And I was just so pissed off. I thought, I've spent all this money. I'm paying this person to actually guide me around this golf course. And they're clueless. I just didn't want to be there. That's sad, but that is one caddy in 90 rounds of golf. And I'll bet the house that she did the vast majority of her caddying on the Lakes course. That sometimes happens, that these courses which have got 36 holes, is that a caddy will caddy 99 times out of 100 on one particular course, and then one day, because of a shortage, Perhaps they've had 120 golfers come down from Bangkok for the weekend and they're required to caddy on the other course and they have no bloody clue. That does happen. So Blue Canyon itself, good Blue Canyon Canyon, in really good condition. Um, they refurbished all the bunkers and stuff 12 months ago and they were that deep in sand. Uh, they were just incredibly difficult to get out of. You, know, you, you and I aren't equipped for getting out of the Sahara. We're used to getting out of a bunker that's got one and a half, two inches of sand and a firm bottom. Or, if maintenance has, uh, has, if there hasn't been enough money to fill bunkers up, we're, we're getting out of bunkers which have got no sand in at all which is actually easier than getting out of a bunker that's got six inches of sand in. So I, I wasn't really impressed with that. Especially the fairway bunkers had it in too. I mean, fairway bunkers really should be hard pan. They shouldn't be soft and fluffy. You don't see the pros struggling out of six inches of sand, do you? They have perfect bunkers. And if that's a golf course, that is a championship course for pros to play on, they got it very, very wrong. Now that had the monkey grass rough under the trees and it was creeping out into the fairways. So they need to get on that. 
and the reason I say I need to get they get on there. The top golf courses where I go to, they have an army of staff, and some of those staff spend their entire working day going from hole to hole, digging out the native grass to stop it invading the golf course. And if you don't dig it out, it will take over. And when it takes over, the only thing that you can do is bring in the bulldozers and strip off three inches of soil. I've known golf courses had to do that you know, in Thailand, where the native grass has taken over and they've just had to bulldoze the entire bloody golf course, greens and all, and start from scratch. So, Canyon course, lakes course, you've been warned. If you don't get on top of it, you'll look like Phuket Country Club. Talking of which, Phuket Country Club. Very good holiday golf course, but as you can see, the native grass had taken over quite a number of the fairways. And the tee boxes. Now, I know how to play out of it. I've got enough experience. Experience? I can play out of that stuff. But you, you're still not sure what you're going to get, whether it's going to come out as a flyer, whether it's going to come out dead, whether it's going to shut the face and give you a big hook. It, it, it's, it's very difficult. But it was a good holiday golf course, and that 10th that par 5 round the lake was, was fun. And uh, despite the first caddy saying water, I now know for a fact that I actually got over it. I was between the, I was between that tenth green and the second green. And it's quite funny. When I look back at it in slow motion, I can actually see a bird take off, disturbed by my ball landing. And the second time around, my caddy went and searched for the ball and found it. So I know that the first one got over as well. Have I forgotten any of the courses? Red Mountain. Red Mountain. How can you forget Red Mountain? Red Mountain. Incredibly difficult golf course. Incredibly difficult greens. Um, I, I play a couple of courses in my normal place with greens like that. And you have expert caddies to guide you. Very tight golf course. Worth the experience, but not a holiday course. You know, uh, an 18 handicapper with a bit of a slice or, or, or whatever fault that they may have that makes them an 18 handicapper, you'd get through six, seven, eight balls there. And I'm not, and I'm not joking. You will lose six, seven, eight balls there. It's, it's not a course for somebody who's got a swing floor. And as you saw in my first round, I had a swing floor and I scored well over my handicap. But this is why I have all these lessons in the winter before I go. You just need to sh really sharpen up every aspect of your game before you consider going to Thailand. So the reason, the two reasons I would not go back to Phuket is one, the cost. Certainly the cost of the accommodation. Yeah, there are cheaper hotels, but then you're compromising on security and cleanliness. So, one is cost. Two is travel time. Obviously to go to Phuket, there, there are some flights which go direct from London Heathrow to Phuket. But generally you're doing a two-hopper and that adds to the travel time and it becomes a bit of a pain in the backside. I mean, coming home, I had a nine-hour stopover in Singapore, which... Bizarrely, I almost missed my flight back. You know, I was messing around in the airport, I was in the business class lounge. With about three hours to go, I went and had a shower and change. And then I found a very uncomfortable chair so that I wouldn't fall asleep because I was absolutely knackered and fell asleep. And uh, I woke up with about half hour to go. I got to the gate while they were still boarding, so that was fine. But I, I could conceivably have missed my flight home. And that's the trouble with a stopover, isn't it? A long stopover like that. But the, the main reason I wouldn't go is the choice of golf courses available to you. 
Where I normally go, there's 27 courses. And out of those 27, there's maybe 10 that you would never go to. You wouldn't fly 6,500 miles to play Lillybrook, would you? So why would you fly 6,500 miles to play something that's worse than Lillybrook? So there's, there's about 10 down there. There's, uh, I don't know, quite know what the split is, but you, could, you can easily say that there's eight which are really good, worth going and playing, and then there's another eight which are absolutely exceptional. You, some of these courses you won't even find a broken tee peg because the caddies are, wherever you go, they're tidying up. They tidy up all the broken tea pegs, they pick up all the litter if somebody's stupid enough to have dropped some litter. They're in a blade of grass out of place and they're manicured and that's what you go for. But most importantly is they're playable. They've got, they've got water, they've got sand. But you can see where you're going. The caddies are excellent. They're excellent at, at clubbing you. They're excellent at giving you the correct yardage. They're wide enough for, to accommodate somebody who's got a, a swing issue, whether that swing issue is covered by jet lag or heat or whether they've they just got a little bit of a slice going on. You can get round these golf courses. Or the scoring end might be a little bit difficult. Fast greens, slopey greens. But generally the caddy will tell you what portion of the green to aim at, you know, short or long or left or right or whatever, you know, and you can see it yourself, you know, if a green, if a, if, if a green looks like um, the Yorkshire Moors, you can pick out the low spot, you can see that front right is better than back left, so you can get round them. I'm not saying that you'll shoot your handicap round them, but you will get round them and you will enjoy it because the chances are you'll get round them without actually losing a ball. Right, my next trip. I've been doing some sums here. Now in the last video I do, I tell you that my November 2023 trip is off. Well, that's incorrect. My November 2023 trip is back on. And I'll be putting out an invitation a little bit later. I'm telling you what it's going to cost you and what we're going to do if you want to come with me. And because we're going to the mainland and we're going to be about two hours from Bangkok, then we might be able to winkle Golf Psychic out and meet him halfway and play somewhere with him. And perhaps he'll play nine holes with, with one group and nine holes with a different group. We might be able to winkle him out of Bangkok a few times. But he likes to play early. And the reason he plays early is because he lives in Bangkok. And the traffic in Bangkok is so bad that you've got to get out of bed at 4.30 to make sure you can actually get out of the city. So more often than not, he's teeing off at 7 in the morning, whereas we're going to be teeing off at about 10 or 20 past 10, something like that, so there's a chance that we'll see him. Anyway, that's the Thailand rant. I'll go stick this on the computer now and edit it, and it's, the dogs are telling me it's nearly time for lunch. What are you... Oh. This is my little ray of sunshine. This is Barney. He follows me around all over the place, don't you? Don't you? You fuck. No, no, I had a wash this morning, honest. Yeah, wherever I go, he follows me. If I'm sat in a chair, he wants to jump up. Don't you, sweetheart? So, see you in the next video. Ta ra!